हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू स्पेक्ट्रम क्लासेस दिस इज माय नेक्स्ट वीडियो इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद द आयोडोमीट्रिक एंड आयोडीमीट्रिक टाइट्रेशन इन वन ऑफ माय वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंसेस एंड सिमिलैरिटीज बिटवीन आयोडोमीट्रिक एंड आयोडीमीट्रिक टाइट्रेशंस एंड इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ विटामिन सी बाय आयोडीमीट्रिक टाइट्रेशन एंड हियर इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एस्टिमेशन ऑफ कॉपर आयन्स बाय आयोडोमीट्रिक टाइट्रेशन सो दैट यू विल बेटर एक्वेंटेड विद द टर्म्स आयोडोमीट्रिक एंड आयोडीमीट्रिक टाइट्रेशन वॉट इज द डिफरेंस एंड वॉट इज द सिमिलैरिटीज इफ वी आर डूइंग सम एक्सपेरिमेंट्स राइट सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द वीडियो so this video i have divided into four different steps first is preparation of solution second is standardization of solution third is titration of copper sulfate versus sodium thiosulfate solution or hyposolution and the last step is the fourth which is calculations and results so in the first step preparation of solution we are going to prepare copper sulfate solution and since i am having a pentahydrated copper sulfate salt so i am preparing the solution of that salt second solution which we require during this experiment is sodium thiosulfate solution so i will prepare and by 10 sodium thiosulfate and the third solution which i require is 10% potassium thiocyanate solution i will tell you why we require this potassium thiocyanate solution at the end of this video apart from this if you are going to standardize the solution of sodium thiosulfate solution which you have prepared you require potassium dichromate solution as well as a uh, starch solution as an indicator so i am not going to discuss the standardization of sodium thiosulfate solution and its preparation because i have discussed this part in detail in one of my video and i will give you the link of that video in the description if you do require the sodium thiosulfate solution preparation and its standardization in detail right so i will skip that part in this video now we are going to discuss the preparation of solution so as i told you again and again i am just following this formula to prepare the solution so here weight is equal to molarity into molecular weight into volume divided by 1000 so here we are preparing the solution of copper sulfate so i take 2.5 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrated salt in 100 ml so here is the calculations and uh, we can roughly estimate the molarity of this solution right similarly we are preparing the sodium thiosulfate pentahydrated solution and uh, its molecular weight is 248 grams per mole so i have taken 2.48 grams in 100 ml to prepare m by 10 solution if you really want to do the calculation so you can put all the values here in this formula and you will get the molarity value so here we are going to roughly estimate the molarity and we are going to standardize this with respect to the potassium dichromate solution so that part i have already discussed in one of my video i am not going to discuss here so here i am preparing the solution of copper sulfate so 2.5 grams in 100 ml and now 25 ml of this copper sulfate i have taken in the conical flask since the solution of copper sulfate is slightly acidic as mentioned on the container so it is about 3.5 ph so just to neutralize that we are adding some drops of sodium carbonate to the solution of copper sulfate just to neutralize this and we get precipitated so up to we get the stable precipitates we need to add sodium carbonate to this solution once it is done we are going to add some acetic acid to dissolve these precipitates
now the precipitates dissolved so we are going to add potassium iodide to this solution so to this solution i am going to add 1 grams of potassium iodide you just see this is also the confirmatory test for the copper so it gives brown precipitate in the purate i have filled n by 10 sodium thiosulfate the initial reading of the purate is it is 4.6 now we are going to start titration so you just see on titration against sodium thiosulfate solution the color of the iodine get disappears once the color is painted we are going to add start solution as an indicator just to see the prominent purple color of starch iodine complex you just see the color starts disappears where the drops are falling so this is the exact point where we need to add the starch solution this is freshly prepared starch solution you see the purple color to this solution we are going to add potassium thiocyanate 10% solution this potassium thiocyanate solution adsorbed with the copper iodide complex and releases the excess of iodine which is adsorbed on the surface of the copper and in this manner we will get the actual reading of the sodium thiosulfate solution so here you can see the final reading of the burette it is about 26.1 ml just before the calculation it is essential to understand the reaction of copper sulfate with potassium iodide and with sodium thiosulfate solutions because it is a redox titration and it is essential to know this redox reaction just to have the information related to the number of electrons involved in this reaction so i am just showing you the molecular reaction first so here is the reaction copper sulfate two molecules react with four molecules of potassium iodide to produce copper 2 i2 cuprous iodide plus 2K2SO4 plus iodine this iodine is released over here since copper sulfate is behaving as an oxidizing agent and it get reduced so change in oxidation state is plus 2 to plus 1 here and i minus converted to i20 so it get oxidized right and this iodine on reaction with sodium thiosulfate solution it produces sodium iodide and and na2s4o6 now coming to the equation part how we are going to use this equation in the calculation so here you just see two moles of copper sulfate produces one mole of iodine and this one mole of iodine consumes or reacts with the two moles of sodium thiosulfate solution 
So here in this reaction, if we see two moles of copper sulfate, it means M1 V1 upon this two, two moles, right? And reacts with two moles of sodium thiosulfate solution. So M1, M2 V2 divided by two, two is this, two moles of sodium thiosulfate solution. If we use the standard equation of redox titration, so we are having A1, M1, V1. If I consider this one for copper sulfate solution and A2, M2, V2, if I consider this for sodium thiosulfate solution. So here, what is A and what is A2? So just to understand that, we are doing this reaction here. So here in this case, this 2 will be cancelled out by this 2 and we ultimately get M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. So if M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2, it means A1 is equal to 1 and A2 is equal to 1 again. So this is how we are going to use the redox titration calculation. Now coming to the calculation part. So here this copper sulfate solution against sodium thiosulfate solution we are putting all the values here so v1 means the volume of copper sulfate solution i have taken is 25 ml the sodium thiosulfate volume is taken from the burette reading so the burette reading is 26 is the final reading and initial reading is 4.6 so ultimately we get 21.4 ml a1 as we have calculated from the equations is equal to 1 a2 from the equation is equal to 1 and the molarity of the sodium thiosulfate solution is m by 10 or we can say 0 0.1 molar and molarity of the copper sulfate solution we need to calculate so here on putting all these values in this equation we get m1 is equal to this much right so molarity of the copper sulfate solution is this much now coming to the strength part so the molarity of the copper 2 plus solution is equal to this and if we are going to calculate the strength so its strength is equal to molarity into molecular weight of copper so this molarity is this much mole per liter molecular weight of copper is 63.5 grams per mole so mole is cancelled out by mole and we will get 5.43 grams per liter right so from the units you please consider this in rather than having one liter i have taken 100 ml of this so 100 ml of this is contains 0 0.543 grams of copper please remember i have taken 2.5 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrated in which we are having 0.63 grams of copper and the result from this experiment I have get is 0 0.543 grams in 100 ml rather than 0 0.63. So this is the result. By iodometric titration we determine the oxidizing agents. So here copper works as an oxidizing agent. right? The, this is very important experiment. So I hope guys you find this video helpful. If you find so. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.